But yeah, it, it was a great week, and, and we want to just share a little bit about what God showed us during this week. Um, and for me, uh, you know, when I came on and, on staff with this church back in November, one of the first things I was told was, hey, you're going to Mexico. Um, I was like, that's awesome. That's, I love Mexico mission trips. I, I grew up doing that uh, in Texas. So I was like, ah, oh, this is exciting. So as we were planning and preparing, I was asking God, okay, give me some idea of, of, of what we need to do kind of on the spiritual side, as this, the, the study side, curriculum side of this mission trip. And so we were, I was kind of praying about that and asking God to lead me to something, and he led me to, to a devotional. Now let me back up a little bit. In the month of May, for Bible breakfast, I had been doing a study that God led me to on purpose for these guys. We were going through purpose and what's God's plan for our life, okay? So that was in May, and then towards the end of May, I got this devotional, I ordered it, came in, and as I was going through it, deeply as I was going through the whole study, realized, oh, this is dealing with God's plan and purpose for their life. And the first thing I thought of was, man, Dave, you made a mistake. We, we just went through that. Why would I want to do that again? Why would I want to do the same thing over and over? And God said, you made a mistake? <laughs> it wasn't a mistake. So this mission trip was a lot about God's plan for our life. And one thing that God really led to me, it was my favorite verse. Uh, I've used it many times up here, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And that's what I was really wanting these guys to know, especially as some of these guys go off to college. This was a great opportunity for them to really kind of kick it off as they go. Um, but it also applies to everyone. God has a plan for all of us, and that's one thing God showed me that week. God has a plan no matter where you are in life, no matter where you are. God still has an incredible plan for you. Hmm. So I just want to encourage you with that. And right now, I want to really encourage you by letting these guys talk. Do you have the microphone? Yep. Perfect. We're going to start with Jerry. Jerry, would you like to begin? I think that'd be pretty appropriate. I mean, good. Yeah. So Jerry's our our uh, veteran missionary. He just had been to Africa, Tanzania, and uh, we even got to celebrate Jerry's birthday on the mission That's trip. That's right. Yeah. That was a that was epic awesome. moment. But yeah. uh, anyway, take it up. Well, this was a unique experience working with these young men. I'll tell you something. Everything they found, even if it was a rock alongside the road, it became a game, and in the game was competition, 100%. And it was so much fun. I wish I'd been 65 or so years younger to keep up with them. But this, this was an amazing trip. Dave has mentioned the, the uh, devotion book we had to begin before we started this trip, and one thing in that devotion book was What's God's plan for your life? At this age, it's a heck of a time to get asked that question and not have an answer for it. It really gets you thinking. I still don't know what it is, but I'm working <laughs> on it. But this, I met with, this, this oh, orphanage is a oasis in a little dusty Mexican town. And it's got green grass and sidewalks and nice clean buildings. And the, orf the 70 or 80 orphans that are in there are much better off than most of the kids that are out in the community. Mm -hmm. And we, I, I went with uh, Holly, uh, Pastor Dave from uh, Community of Faith's wife to visit a, a home. There was a 12-year-old girl in there taking care of her year-and-a-half-old niece while the little girl's mother was out working in the fields with the parents. They work in the fields for 12 hours a day, and they earn approximately $10. Hmm. Yeah, we find that hard to believe. But this little girl is waiting for the day when she can go out and work in the field so she can have money of her own. She's never been to school. 
and neither has her older sister who had the baby. Yeah, and it's, the boys, went, the family went to school, but the girls didn't. And you talk about dreams, she wants to become a doctor. Yeah, so there are dreams out there. And we the guys will talk about the, the ranches they, they run for, for men with drug and alcohol abuse problems. And they go in for a two-year period, and they're there. They're given training, so they leave there with a trade, and they don't really need to go back out in the fields and work in those menial jobs. And uh, just the faith of those people and the faith of all the people that work with the children was just absolutely amazing. I was impressed, and I'm saddened that we can't develop programs like that here that work as well, because it was phenomenal. All right. Yeah. Should I sing? If you want to. Yeah. All right. yeah. yeah, so this is my second missions trip. And yeah, I don't go to the community of hope, but Brandon and Derek invited me on this trip, and I'm very glad I got this opportunity because it's been amazing just going with these people and working with them throughout the week. And yeah, it was just an amazing experience overall. And what I noticed on both missions trips, but here also, um, in Mexico, the people are just incredibly generous and faithful. Like, they don't really have that much, but they're just, with what they have, they're incredibly generous. And in a lot of ways, they're richer than us, just with their faith and what they have to give. And yeah, that's just made a pretty big impact on me, just seeing that across the world, pretty much. And, yeah, all the kids in the orphanage also just look very happy. Like, it's pretty amazing that they've, um, yeah, got this opportunity and their lives are being changed by God. So, yeah, it's just pretty amazing to see that. And another thing that I've kind of learned throughout the mission trip is there's just a lot of work that has to be done for these kind of things to work. And somebody's gotta do it, but when you do it, you're really doing God's work. So I've just kind of felt like I should find opportunities to help others. And that's pretty much, that's a very important thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, awesome. thank you. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, I'm so, Nathan. Nathan. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna sit down. What's your name? There's a lot of people you all here. Trandon. Um, my name is Trandon. Thank you, Pastor John, for. I'm 16. This is my very first mission trip that I got to go on. Um, and I'd say the greatest impact for me was just all the little kids that were there. I mean, like Nathan said, uh, especially for an orphanage, they were all pretty happy. But it's like, as soon as we got there, it was around three, four o'clock. And, you know, it's the first thing I wanted to do is like play with the kids. Because in our youth group meetings, that's all Dave like mentioned was kids, kids, kids. And we get there and like, where are all the kids, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> um, but all they did there was soccer. So kind of soccered out. <laughs> <laughs> there is. The one day that me and Derek uh, conned them into playing basketball, so it was fun for us, but for them, it, they didn't really play that sport that much. Um, but I had a great time there with the kids and how happy they were just to have visitors because um, they don't get those very often. And there's just one little guy, his name is Denny, who is, he's the guy in the orange shirt right next to me in that photo you all saw. That guy was like the most cutest thing in the world, but he was very good at soccer, and I think he like broke Tyler's ankles at least maybe four times. <laughs> anyway, that, that's all I got, so thank you for listening to us.
So my name is Brandon, and this is also the first mission trip that I went on. And prior to going on, I didn't know. I just thought all the kids were just orphans, but a lot of them actually were taken out of very abusive households and whatnot. So not only were they in an orphanage, but like they had very bad like pasts. And just going there and seeing like what they were saying, those kids are just so happy. Like you know, God is working in their community, and you know that the staff is doing such a great job. They're all very, very kind people, and it was just very impactful for me to see, even with such a bad past, how happy you and joyful you can still be just having God and having people that care for you. And I would say a really great experience for me was we made these little garden towers that took a lot of prep that were kind of annoying because we had to like flip a lot of dirt and get it all wet. and. It's pretty messy. I got my shoes kind of wrecked. It's okay though. But um, <laughs> but yeah. So we made these big garden towers, and we just took them to like a couple people in the community. But seeing how much just those garden towers, just that little bit of food supply, that just made them so happy, and they were so grateful for such a small thing that we can do for them, and it really made me think about like just the little things that we can do there and that we can do over here that can really just make such a big impact in other people's lives. So. It was a great trip, and I bonded a lot with all these guys. It was it was a it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, my name's Derek. This was also my first uh, mission trips I've ever been on. Uh, this is my brother. For those of you who don't know, and my other brother who isn't on the trip, he's not here today. He was actually um, in a military camp for, R it's an ROTC thing that he does, it's an indoctrination camp because he's gonna be uh, a Marine. So he couldn't join us, but yeah, I think the biggest takeaway that I learned uh, and all of us here learned was that you never want to challenge a group of 10 year olds to soccer. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think, yeah, I think that was a very big uh, lesson that all of us learned the hard way, uh, multiple days in a row. Um, but all jokes aside, I think my favorite part um, was actually this ranch that we went to. It's called Rancho de Cristo, and it's a men's rehab uh, center. It's outside of the orphanage, about, I don't know, like 10 miles or something, kind of out towards the beach. Um, and we had to drive along these like kind of sketchy, rocky roads, and we were like bumping all over the place in the van. Um, it was super interesting. But when we got there, it was just another really like what Jerry was saying, like an oasis almost, and like a, a terrible like t town-ish village. It was like an oasis. It was super nice. Um, the buildings were very well um, put together. Um, and even better, the guys were just super happy when we were there. I remember first getting there, um, and the leader who's worked there, he was super happy to see us. He's like, thank you for coming. Uh, make this like feel, uh, make this a home to you and stuff. And like, we're super blessed that you're here. Um, the guys are super happy to see you. Um, and I think my favorite part was um, playing basketball with a group of guys because um, it's something I like to do. And being on a trip in Mexico, I didn't really think that playing basketball was something I was going to be able to do to connect with um, people. And getting that opportunity was just a super awesome experience um, playing with those guys. And uh, not only did I bless them, but they blessed all of us too um, in the process. So, yeah. My name is Tyler. This was my first mission trip. What really touched my heart about this mission was the staff at the orphanage. Like a lot of them, they are just so kind and generous and like helpful. Like you ask them a question, they don't like, oh, why, why are you asking this question? They just answer the question. And the, that doesn't always happen, so. Mm. <laughs> and another thing about the staff, not all the staff are from there. A lot of the staff, they just, they're people like us. They go down there for a mission trip a few times, and then just God touches their heart, and they decide to stay and help, and they live there. Hmm. Like, they didn't start there, but they live there, and they're helping there now. A lot of them, yeah, it just shows that God's really working there and is at work, and that just touched my heart. Hey, Tyler, just... To take off on that, you worked a lot in the wood shop. Derek, you did too. You guys um, did some specific projects. Um, uh, you were you were painting, uh, redoing some benches. Yeah. Derek designed a sign for their coffee shop that they have that is a neat little thing for the 
Anyway, good work. But um, where was where were the guys from? You, uh, you were talking about that earlier. Yeah, ha Javier. There was two guys in the workshop. Javier. He was from Mexico. His sister started working uh, there, and he was in a bad place. He was addicted to drugs. He went to Rancho de Cristo. Yeah. He went out of rehab, and then he went to the place, and he started working mm. with no previous experience of wood shop. He started the wood shop, mm. and then Greg. He's from Wichita, Kansas, <laughs> and uh, he he went down there with his church a few times, and then he just, God touched his heart, and he decided to stay there, because yeah. he felt that I was God's purpose for him, Yeah. and yeah. Really cool. That's neat that you got to meet those people, and I think that's really powerful how, you know, a lot of the people that work down there and that serve have come from different places in life. Some of them just maybe retired and decided to go work down there for almost the rest of their life. Others go down and, like you said, Tyler, God touches their heart and, you know, I'm going to just come stay for a year or two or ten. <laughs> and they keep on doing practical stuff. There's so many things that are needed to make that place happen. Um, I was amazed, Tyler, all you guys, at how in incredibly invested you were in the whole week. I mean, seriously, yeah, I don't know, Dave, did you hear any complaints? No, not at all. Well, no, well. <laughs> no, no, not, not Nobody not did. And the food was simple. That's <laughs> to your point, Trevor, right? Food was really simple, but, you know, and none of us, did any of us starve? Let's see, we're all here. No, I guess not. Uh, boxes of cereal. Boxes of cereal. You ate the actual box just to survive? Yeah. <laughs> not really. Uh, but uh, these guys worked hard, and they played hard with these guys, and it was just making an impact. You know, you're spending time with the kids, you're doing the jobs that you got to do, but then when, that, when they were off, so to speak, it was like, no, we're running to go play soccer and until, like, dark, <laughs> and the kids had to go to bed. Um, and so um, you can be very proud of these guys as parents or as church members that they came to serve and help and um, uh, really, really grateful. And having our elder statesman here, Jerry, he's like a kid at heart, man. That guy never stops. <laughs> my body parts don't work as good anymore. <laughs> Says his body parts don't work as good. Don't believe that. He's, he, he can run circles around most of us. But uh, I, I don't know. I was just really amazed. What, so honestly, little guy, what was the most annoying thing of having your pastor there with you? Nothing. <laughs> you really want us to go there, Pastor John? <laughs> what? Nothing. We're glad you were there. I, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, I didn't do too many selfies, did I? I didn't abuse the selfie privilege? No. Okay. I did a couple. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm serious, man. When I got back, I had aches and pains from trying to keep up with these horses, and whether it was on the basketball court or I don't think I tried soccer. But uh, they, they really just gave all they had. Yeah. Uh, they could say left it all on the court or left it all in the Sente Guerrero. And that... The mission there, it's called, it's in your, the, if you want to look it up, Foundation for His Ministry, Vicente Guerrero, it's south of Ensenada, basically. So if you've ever maybe taken a cruise ship to Ensenada, get off the cruise ship and go down about two, uh, two hours south and you'll find your way to uh, Vicente Guerrero and to the Foundation for His Ministry Orphanage and uh, lots of good things that are happening really for the whole community because you expressed, I think, uh, the, the theme, go ahead to the next slide, I think, yeah, that theme, you'll never be the same, is emblazoned out on different places in the orphanage and in the grounds, okay? And uh, do you, church, do you still believe, does, does God still change lives? Amen. Is he still about miracle working and ma making lives change in Jesus' name? Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. And we've seen that. We see that in the kids that are ministered to, the, the children that are well taken care of. You guys, I mean, these kids, they had some, like you said, I think, Trandon, I mean, they had better lives probably than they would have had outside of, some one of you said that, right? Outside of the, because of the abusive situations that they'd grown up, one of you were talking about that. Yeah, because of the abusive situations they'd grown up in. And uh, um, what a blessing to have a safe place. Uh, we'll be, again, talking keeping on talking about what's coming up with the uh, royal family kids, having a safe place is so vital for children, isn't it? A safe place for kids to learn and grow. And, and so to have that is so, so important. So God's changing children's lives, but doesn't stop there. When you have these, the men's ranches, there's a, both a men's ranch of direct recovery. People come in there in some pretty tough places, recover, and their lives are changed. Again, does Jesus still change lives? Amen. And there's then another house called Rafa's house, that where it's a second uh, step after that, where they're able to continue their recovery. But uh, that whole theme of 
and you'll never be the same. Lives are changed in Jesus' name, and that's a, a clear testimony, I think, to what we're all to be about. We get little inspirations, I think, by doing this stuff, right? This, this kind of puts a little recharge, I think, in all of our hearts, saying, um, you guys said it very clearly, you know, well, this is what we're called to do, right? This is who we are as believers in Jesus. We're called to bring life and the life-giving name of Jesus in what we say and what we do, Right? that our lives reflect what we, what's in our hearts. And uh, the verse that uh, I chose to kind of reflect on as we close here um, is a familiar one. Um, and let's see if I opened it up to the right spot here. Um, so go ahead and put it on the screen there. Why don't we read that together? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. And that's the promise. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, in Christ a new creation. And when you can get glimpses of that, and we get the glimpses of that here, how beautiful it is to see someone come to faith or be renewed, coming back to Jesus, or a prodigal son that's coming home, um, is an amazing thing to witness and welcome. And the, we want to be a place, again, with doors that are wide open. And it, it goes on to say, I'm just going to read another verse following that in verse 20. And it says this, Paul writes, We are, therefore, Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. Christ's ambassadors, right? We're working on behalf of the king. We're sent. We're sent wherever we go, and that's right here in Wilsonville, <laughs> and that's Vicente Guerrero or Jerry you know, going to Tanzania to help the brothers and sisters in Christ there. You can name it. I know many of you have been many places, whether it's within the country or within the world. This message and the mission is the same, Right? Christ's ambassadors, God makes his appeal still. He chooses to use us. We're not perfect. We're broken vessels, but God says, I'll take whatever you got, and I'll use it for my glory. Are you willing to go? Are you willing to be obedient and to step out in faith? And um, uh, that's kind of the, the closing word, I guess, that I, I think about. Um, um, anything else we missed, guys, before we wrap this up? Any other just... Uh, you got something? No, okay. Um, but I wanted to have you think about this. Go to the next slide here to think about. You know, where is God calling you to serve? Right? You're here. You're open. Many of you serve in various capacities right here at church and in the community. Praise God. But continue to make that a prayer of your heart. Where is God calling you? Where is God calling me to serve? How can you be a missionary this summer? Okay, and think about it now. Don't think, well, someday I might go on a mission trip. No, <laughs> today, right? What is God calling you to serve? And we've got these ministries that are even coming up right here. Oh, well, yeah, I could give a day or two to help at Vacation Bible School. Uh, Royal Family Kids Camp, we got all kinds of needs. <laughs> you can go visit them as you leave today, um, whether it's this summer or it's next year. Uh, but even the needs, immediate needs that we've got, whether it's finances, whether it's donations, whether it's help with things, prayer, all those things. Um, and then we've got a, right, a pretty neat outreach that's coming up in a couple months, our Ranch Revival Part 2. It's going to be our, called our Sunday Cowboy Church, another fun way to welcome people in a just off-site at the Kelly and Dave Grills Ranch. And, hey, we're going to have food and, and fun and an amazing message of Jesus' love for them. So... Uh, I just wanted us to think about this. Um, you guys, again, have given your hearts and blood, sweat, and tears, helping out uh, families, supporting these kids to do what they've done. Church, you've supported, and we give so many thanks uh, for what's been done. And uh, um, I, I just wanted to wrap up with that and that reminder. Yes, Jesus is still changing lives, right? That message, new creations, that's bringing uh, even out of the dust, right? Beautiful things out of what's dust and broken. That's what God's specialty is. And so let's trust and believe that and, uh, and know that God is still about those, uh, those amazing works and he wants to use you and me. Not because I'm perfect, not because you're perfect, not because any of us have anything to give other than what God's first put in our hearts. We love because he first loved us.